ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> I decided to entitle this um, talk, A Modest Proposal 2012, in clear reference to the pamphlet published in 1729 by Jonathan Swift, the inventor of the word Yahoo, a term that first appeared in his universal classic of children's and utopian literature, Gulliver's Travels. I chose the topic after struggling for several weeks to find a theme that would not be too much off the mark from what you, conveners, had in mind when you invited me to speak here on significance and singularity. I chose it because of my Fulbright in literature and because I could not presume to add even a tad to the wealth of these TEDx meetings, to add more than a touch of entertainment by taking a very old, a very trite idea and presenting it today in an unusual way. That idea suddenly surged when a flying plastic bag hit me in the face <laughs> as I was food shopping in a busy third world market and immediately grew upon me, lying at the confluence of three streams of thought murmuring in my mind these many years. The first is a nightmare I've been having doctor. Images of whole cities overcome with junk. Remember that scene at the end of the first Planet of the Apes with only the top of the Statue of Liberty sticking out of the rubble of an earth destroyed by man? Well, in my recurring nightmare, a universal tidal wave of junk is rising, rising, as in a time-lapse video, submerging all our cities, covering most monuments, in picture books and documentaries. The pyramids, the Taj Mahal, the Great Wall of China, all the cherished sites from Machu Picchu to Angkor, from Marrakesh to the Great Barrier Reef, a tsunami of trash rising above the Eiffel Tower, Frankfurt Tower here, all the skyscrapers from New York to Dubai to Shanghai. The nightmare always ends when the moving mountains of trash have reached in the blink of a cosmic eye the summit of mighty Everest. When the pain wakes me up, doctor, and I spend the rest of my day gazing at these rings of light-filled cloud floating above limitless expanses of trash where the mountains have been. The second is my current reflection on the concept of the oxymoron, that coexistence of impossible opposites, like hunger that satisfies, or darkness that illumines, screaming silence, or serious joking. You get the picture. I've been exploring that concept with an obsession I can't justify to explain what cannot be explained, to cope with contradictions, or when inspiration falters and I use one for a poem or a story. In sum, I have come to see the world now as a big, absurd oxymoron. And this is my third stream, the prevalence of so much hunger these days and so much suffering from overeating, wealth growing in our emerging world, and poverty even more. Whole classes achieving the status of consumers while other bigger slices of the population I've been observing live, if we can call that live, on what the others throw away. For many years, I've been observing, mulling the fates of a few of these people who visit our garbage every day. Often enough, my friends, for me to know some of the names or nicknames they go by, thinking how politics and economics, and all the academic disciplines we teach or preach can do nothing about these lives. Ladies and gentlemen, this proposal of mine, which I submit to this August assembly, in humble reference I said, and deference and reverence to a great mind who had the guts to offer a singular idea to deal with famine and inequality. This small modest proposal of mine aims at offering one possible solution for the plight of the millions of humans who sustain themselves from what other humans throw away. I must immediately admit that the question is complex, 
the problem in maths. And 15 minutes or 15 months or even 15 years won't be enough for me to analyze each facet of the question. Like a modern day hydra, the problem has millions of mouths. As soon as you plug one, millions more will burst open to holler for food. That's why I shall not speak today about obesity, how a little bit from here can go a long way there. I shall not directly speak about the food that is wasted, that could be used to feed the millions who suffer from hunger. Surely there must be studies on how much nutrition restaurant people throw away. Because patrons don't like what is served, or the more than they can eat are dieting or else because of regulations, like dates, when food is no longer food. Talk about an oxymoron. The same regulations that decide, that dictate, that all the uneaten meals served by airlines cannot be reused, even if packaged. I shall not speak about the resources that are used to package all the food served in individual portions for each individual meal in each of the thousands of outlets multiplying all over our planet. Portions wrapped in plastic, often discarded with half the food inside in garbage bins. I shall not speak about all the trash we submerge our planet with, but only one kind. One tiny yet immense proportion of the universal waste. Two wit, the plastic we use for the water we drink, for the sodas we sip, and for the snacks we munch on, and then discard. In dedicated recycling bins here, where there's a culture for that, or just anywhere in the landscape there, where whatever recycling there is, is taken care of by hungry scavengers, the subject of my talk, which I submit in the form of a single question for you, the international scientific community to ponder. Can't we think of a way in which the plastic we make to package food is designed from the start to have some other use than meet the moving mountains of junk, which ultimately end up feeding that new continent growing in the Pacific Ocean, Isabel spoke about it, which humanity will so call garbageia, a whole continent made of accumulated indestructible waste. Can't we think of ways in which the plastic packaging is conceived from the start to furnish food? Yes, food, where food is needed, a method to make it so that both the contents and the container are consumed with those poor populations in mind, those who can't afford to buy food and live off the offal of others. I see hands rising, obstacles like tentacles, pouncing from all kinds of directions, objections to do with human biology, chemistry, ethics, and cost and whatnot. Valid objections all I admit, if we look at the question narrowly. But let me first develop a little bit more this, my singular idea, for whatever significance may lie in it. What I advocate could start with the launch of a competition, like the Bill and Melinda, Melinda Gates Foundation Initiative on Smart Toilets, especially designed for our developing world. I call for an international competition funded by philanthropy and by a tiny tax on the packaging industry with a single objective to develop packaging that can be edible, yet has all the other qualities of the stuff that ends as trash. Unlike other initiatives, where the prize is awarded only on the conclusion of the process, if the process succeeds, here we could set up intermediate prizes with progressively important rewards for scientists, for example, who would improve the nutritional value of ordinary waste to minimum daily recommended figures, for example, for a child who chews on a plastic bottle, or for those engineers who would develop a two-layer fabric made of an outer cover like a film, which could be made to evaporate when it is peeled off the inner, a thicker layer that could be eaten by one who needs to eat. In parallel, research could be promoted in selected places, in a few of our countries out there. On a sampling of those people I've been referring to, homeless men, women and children of different ages, research on the effect of eating partial or total junk on human organisms, the results of which could feed the principal agenda by showing what directions of what works and what doesn't. I can tell you already, based on empirical observation, that people who eat out of garbage never get sick, are never seen in hospitals, perhaps because unlike those folks who eat too much, they can afford to go to hospital, or more likely because the insides have adapted to that kind of intake. The main lines of research and our experimentation and marketing, yes, marketing will be needed, ladies and gentlemen, 
to persuade consumers not to throw away the remains of what they can't finish eating or drinking, not to throw away our edible plastic, but to preserve it in bags, which are made of the same palatable substance. Preserve it until a beggar comes by to pick it up, like we used to do with bread in our own cultural sphere, where never a crumb was to be found among garbage or anywhere it's likely to be defiled. Bread was holy, you know, until so recently. Don't waste your waste. Help feed the hungry, or something like that, the public service ads would go. Edible trash would ease the, would ease the endless flow of those folks perpetually looking for food, freeing their hands and mouths for worthier pursuits. I'm calling for research on machines and processes that could extract all the nutrients from all the food that is wasted in the North and in the South. Don't think there is no waste in the South. Processes and machines that could help recuperate all the proteins, vitamins, minerals, all the waste of agri business, and mix them in this new molecule for which I have as yet no name, a molecule that will be used to make this new material we advocate. Mother Nature has provided us with countless clues if you could only look and see in substances abundant everywhere, in shells of various kinds, in olive pits, the pits of all the fruit with pits, in flax and sugar cane and bamboo, and in numberless species of plants, and see what would work and what would not. Modern science has invented computers for simulations, genetic engineering for manipulation of living cells. Let's see which common organisms could be harnessed to produce fibers to tie these new molecules together, fibers stronger than cobwebs, yet breakable by human gastric juices, fibers which commonly found insects, like cockroaches, could be taught to manufacture. We in the South, the principal, though by no means the only potential beneficiaries, would naturally provide the millions of human guinea pigs needed to whom various avatars of the new substance could be fed with or without their knowledge. We could test in real time the processes from lab to manufacture to transportation to the consumer and to what we now can call the post-consumer. In parallel, the pharma industry could test the various molecules progressively in those areas of the world where rules about what is permissible in packaged foods are loose, testing how to improve the taste for the stuff for people who have no choice but to stuff their bellies with the ultimate aim of developing addiction. Yes, addiction. The tobacco precedent is here for all of us to see. And while doing it, while at it, doing the potentially more lucrative research on which molecules in this container substance in the making could be mixed in with the contain to check the appetites of those millions who suffer from too much nourishment so they can be indu induced to eat less and to buy more and throw away more food and drink which would end up enriching our trash from a nutritional perspective. Business people with money to spare who know where the future lies will surely get on board and start investing in any of these directions working hand in hand with us academics where there could only be win-win situations. Now, just don't tell me this proposal is preposterous. Jonathan Swift's proposal was preposterous, who advocated nearly 300 years ago that the very poor should sell their children when they have reached one year of age, sell them as meat to be eaten by the rich, and solve, and solve the problem of hunger and overpopulation while improving the income of the poor. Don't tell me my proposal is impossible. Nothing is impossible for humanity which teaches that when there's a will, et cetera, et cetera, with so much genius around, so many labs and research orgs, and so much already being done in many countries. Look, wasn't it just the other day I read a blog in the electronic version of Le Monde about this team of US and French scientists working on a system to develop food packaging to look like fruit, where the container and the contained can be consumed. They gave these the names of wiki cells, just like my idea, there's a note there. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I realize perfect timing, as I'm fast <laughs> reaching the end of my allotted time, that I must beg your pardon if my proposal lacks details, offers no figures at all, or specifics, or timetable, leaving the mouth open, sorry, I mean, leaving the door open for all kinds of interpretations. I beg your pardon if my proposal has gone too far as to upset many summits here and there. I humbly beg your pardon if my proposal doesn't go far enough as to plainly state that in order to eliminate hunger, we must remove the stomachs of the hungry, that to cure humanity of its maladies of waste, we must force humanity to starve by poisoning its water and smothering its farmland in plastic waste. 
Thank you very much.